going to do a brood inspection, but first of all, we need to make sure our bee suits are done up properly. We don't want any bees getting into our suits, so make sure you zip. It's right the way up and you've got that down nice and tight. As you can see, my bee suit hasn't arrived, so I've pinched Jerry's. So I'm going to light the bee smoker for you. We need some newspaper, just shred it up like this. Screw it into a little ball and give it a light. Okay. Just pop a little bit more in. When that's a light, then get your get your fuel and pop it in. Try not to get smoke in your eyes. <laughs> a few puffs on the bellows. I'm using leaves here, dry leaves from the garden. But you can use paper bark, pine needles, you can even use a hessian bag if you want, as long as there's no print on it. We need to use organic matter so the bees aren't affected by any chemicals. Now we've got our suit on, we've got our gloves on, we've got our smoker lit ready to go. We're going to smoke the front entrance of our hive. We're going to stand at the side, or even towards the back a little bit. The reason for this is, if we stand in the front, that's their flight path in and out from whichever direction they're coming in, and we don't want to stand in their way. So we just come down here, and we smoke the front of the hive. So a few gentle puffs of smoke along the front entrance. That helps to calm the bees down, but also stops the guard bees from releasing an alarm pheromone. So the other bees in the hive aren't alerted to the danger. It's a good idea to check your brood box at least twice a year just to look at the general health of your bees and make sure there's no bee diseases. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to take the lid off. This is a telescopic lid, so that can go over there. When you take your lid off, just make sure you pop everything either behind the hive or just to the side. So I'm just going to pop my hive tool under there just to crack open the, the inner cover. Give a few puffs of smoke like that just to calm the bees down a little bit. Okay, so that's long enough. So we'll just pop that down on the floor. Now I'm just going to smoke the top of the hive like this in between the frames just to calm the bees down a little bit. Next I'm going to pop my hive tool under one corner like this on top of the queen excluder. Push it in a little and try this corner. This just cracks any propolis or wax that the bees have used to fill in any gaps. So propolis comes from a tree resin, okay, and the bees use that like glue to fill in any little holes or any little cracks that are in your hive. So I'm just going to move this hive over onto the inner cover, like so. That just stops all the bees from going onto the floor. It keeps them happy there. All right. Just a little bit more smoke. This is the queen excluder. This stops the queen who lives down here in the brood box from coming up into the honey soup. So we'll just gently take this off like so. Now when you're taking it off, just be really careful and mindful because your queen bee might be on the underside here. So have a good look like this. Make sure you can't see her anywhere. And there's all your gorgeous little worker bees on there. We're going to pop that on the top of your flow super and I'm going to just smoke gently with nice cool smoke down into the frames. This makes the bees go down. All right so now we're in the brood box so we keep our eye out for the queen. So with your hive tool what you need to do is go in between your first and your second one just give it a little push like that on either side. This just loosens any wax or propolis they've used as a glue to glue the frames together. So what we do is 
we just get the hook from our tool, pop it underneath like that, and we can easily grab hold like this. Pull our frame out. Okay, I just set mine on the edge like that so I can get a good grip. Now when you're inspecting your brood cone, keep it in a vertical position. If you put it up like this, into the horizontal position, you might lose your brood, you'll get honey dripping out. And try and keep your frame over the top of your box, because if your queen's on there and you're moving it over the grassy area, you might lose your queen. <laughs> so I'm going to give this a shake so we can have a look at the frame a bit more clearly. Okay? So what we're going to be looking for we're going to have a look for some eggs. We're going to be looking for worker, which we can see there's plenty of workers. And we've got the drone cells here. Also, while we're in here, we're going to be looking for any pollen that they might be storing and any honey. If I turn this around, we can see a cell on this side. See this big funny looking thing here? That's a queen cell. If you look really carefully in here, you'll see they've started bringing pollen in. All the different beautiful colours. Once again, we just pop, pop the hive tool in sideways like that, gently prise them apart. And we can come underneath, lift our frames out like this. Okay, sit it on the edge just to grab hold of it. Have a little look for a queen. And then I'm going to give this another shake into the box. As you can see, we've got worker brood over here. There's also little, little bits of honey. You can, might be able to see them shining in the light. You need to make sure you put your frames back in the same way you took them out. Okay, so we'll pop that one back in. Now that uh, there's a nice gap, you can actually just move it along. Just pick it up like this if you like, if that's easier for you. Alright, so I'm going to give this one a nice little shake. We'll just have a quick look to see if we can see the queen. And also we're looking for some signs of disease as well. And hive beetles. We don't have Varroa here in Australia, luckily enough. But um, obviously you do in other places. I'm going to give that a nice shake so they all go back down into the box. Okay, we'll have a look at this one. There's a really nice selection here of drone brood. And you can tell the difference from the workers. When you're checking your brood box, you really need to be looking for signs of chalk brood, EFB and AFB. With chalk brood, <coughs> you tend to find little white dried pellets in the cells where the babies were growing. This usually happens if there's a lot of moisture getting into your hive. So if that happens, what I gen generally tend to do is I'll put my hive, I'll just locate it just a little bit, a foot into the sunshine, maybe lift the lid to let some air get airflow get through. And this will usually clear it up. Okay, so we're gonna pop that one back in there. I'm just going to give them a little bit more smoke. Now when you're working in your brood box, you really need to do it as calmly as quietly and also quickly-ish. And because you don't want your brood getting cold. Okay, so we're going to keep working through these as quick as we can, but as calmly as we can. Another thing to look out for is AFB. Now, AFB is a bacteria that has spores. Now these spores, they can last 40 years. So if your hive gets AFB, you're gonna to have to burn it, unfortunately. The poor little darlings will have to be burned. A few years ago, while I was, when I sort of started beekeeping, just had a couple of hives in the garden, I could smell a really foul smell. So I opened up my hive, and I had sunken cappings in the brood. Um, there was dead brood, there were brown and black, it was a really awful smell. So I got a friend of mine round who's a, 
old beekeeper guy and um, he did a little mm. test for me which was really interesting so he got a little match what he did he stuck the match into one of the cells and he pulled it out and it was all like ropey and stringy and that was kind of a confirmation that it was AFB but what we did was we took a sample of that and we sent it off to the labs so they could say yes it's definitely this you know you need to burn your hive which was really awful because I got a little cup of petrol at night time I lifted the lid closed the entrance at the front and you know poured the petrol in and they're all buzzing away all happy and then a couple of seconds later it just was dead quiet it was it was really really sad but it was something that had to be done right there's another bee disease as well that your bees could get and that's EFB that's a bacteria so what happens with them the usual the larvae will usually be brown or black or black maybe with sunken cappings but as you can see this is a really healthy hive it's looking really really good okay, I'm not going to shake these little girls off here so this one's right next to the the wall so we may need to give it a little bit more of a, of a push just in case there's any brace comb attaching from the wall to the frame. So we're going to lift this one out. Okay, I'm going to have a look at this one. Up here we've got some worker brood and as you can see up here I'm just going to give these ones a little bit of a shake so we can have a bit more of a look. We've got honey here. Just over here, if you look a little bit more carefully, we can see some drones. They're quite a lot bigger than the worker bees. They've got a fatter body and a little bit rounder around the back. And they've got huge eyes, so you'll know them. And they don't sting, not like the girls. <laughs> I'm going to put this hive back together because we need to keep it as warm as possible. It's the brood box usually stays around 35 degrees. So the brood kept nice and warm. So it's got to go back in the same order it came out. So I'm just going to move all these over. I'm trying not to squash any of these gorgeous little girls. I'm just going to pop this one back in. So we're going to pop the queen excluder back on the same way that we took it off. Okay. I always put it on at a bit of an angle like this and then I can just give it a, any bees on the edge like this. They won't get squashed. They can just gently be pushed to the side. Alright, so we make sure that's on in the right place. I'll pop this flow super back on, trying not to squash any of these gorgeous little girls. Okay, just make sure it's nice, nice and straight and lined up at the front and the back. Then we're going to put the inner cover on. I'm going to pop this lid back on. There's a few more hive beetles here. Okay, I'm going to squash that one. This is the one. Okay, we'll pop, pop the roof on as well. And here we go. It's our brood inspection done. Mm -hmm. This was a really, really healthy hive. Plenty of workers. So it was looking really nice. To keep up to date with all the latest episodes, please subscribe to the Flow Hive YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or suggestions, pop them in the box below and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as we can.